so uh, here's my uh, segment on inverters. Uh, here I've, uh, they're all the same type. These are all uh, modified sine wave inverters. And uh, this one's uh, 1500, uh, here's uh, 1750, 3000, and uh, 8000 watt uh, inverter. It just seems that as soon as they go over the 2500 watt inverters, they give you two negatives and two positives. Same thing with this bigger one. Here's an 8000, they're giving you two negatives and two positives. And uh, that's just so that you can break up, spread that load out. Uh, a little bit over your uh, battery bank and um, a connection in particular if you're just using the uh, wing nut connections that uh, you get on uh, most typical uh, deep cycle batteries uh, it's only good for about uh, 100 maybe 150 amp and then you pretty much uh, max that connection out so by giving you two you're able to break it up on the on your battery bank uh, a lot better and uh, it'll allow more amps to flow through so that you can realize the maximum out of your inverter. Uh, as far as um, this one here almost seemed to be my favorite as far as uh, the fan not being annoying. Uh, this one here is probably runner-up and it only turns on as you put load through these things. This one here is fairly uh, quiet but it, is, it does have a great big fan on the back. And uh, out of all of them, so far, this one here is uh, by far the most annoying. And uh, I've had others that look more like this, 3000 watt, and that was the one that I would jam the uh, popsicle stick in, or the straw, just to stop that uh, fan from turning. Um, but the one that I'm running inside right now in my uh, battery room is identical to this one and that one I uh, short circuited it and I accidentally kind of burned that circuit out but yet the fan goes it seems to have a mind of its own uh, they all draw about the same even the small little uh, 75 watt inverter just to make the conversion uh, from 12 volt DC to uh, 110 or 120 volts AC they all draw about the same amount of power to do the converting. So this one here, I just read the, uh, the manual that came with it, and they said it draws a little bit less than 0.6 of one amp. So that would be about the same for all of these. This one here, because it's such a large one, might draw, it can go close to a full two amp, this one here. But, um, you can tell when it's, you know, when it's kind of like Chinese. Let me just turn this around for you. Look, they can't even get the sticker right. So here they, their claim is an 8,000 watt continuous. But look, they got 1,600 watts peak. Well, I think they meant 16,000. 8,000 continuous, 16,000 surge, right? So... I mean, they couldn't even get the sticker right, so I can just imagine the electronics inside. How much did they pay attention to that? Uh, I've got another one from Powerjack and, uh, in the battery room, and they claim that to be a pure sine wave. And yet, out of all of them, I think I hate, I hate that inverter the most. It, I get light flicker, and I get all kinds of uh, nasty stuff. Right now, uh, you hear a buzz going on, and it's because I've got a radio set. And what I wanted to do is just show you um, how things light up when I... Uh... So, you can see how much distortion that comes from, uh, from an inverter. And uh, if I had uh, line charge, the odds are you wouldn't have gotten that buzz. Even the power from a, a generator is unbelievably clean uh, compared to an inverter, even a pure sine wave inverter. The only thing that you should do is uh, apply a ground wire to your generator and it's in particular in the winter time uh, and it's because the air is very dry in the winter time and what happens is, is the generator builds up this internal static and if you have a fairly large stereo like I have and you had the uh, volume turned up 
uh, and you'd notice that uh, after about two three minutes you hear this high whiz in, in the, the line power coming through the stereo and then all of a sudden it, it let it, you'll hear crack it'll, it'll let itself go and then that, that buzz starts to build itself up again with the generator so um, they do give you um, a ground on the generator and if you were to use that ground it will eliminate that you won't get any more of that uh, high whiz and then finally a discharge and that's what's happening and it could be harmful to your electronics so um, uh, I do have a ground wire that I do use I don't use it faithfully but uh, if I know I'm going to have the stereo cranked and I've got friends over in that and I will throw the ground uh, on it just to get rid of that uh, and in the winter time I'll go kind of so I'm going to just uh, turn the inverter back on here and uh, now here I'm gonna have to get my cameraman to lean right over, lean right over because it's it's the buzz of the electronics I want you to hear. So again, we're on the the modified sine wave inverter, my 3000 watt, and uh, okay. So there there goes all of my. This is a seven channel. So those uh, little breakers that you heard were uh, the breakers for each channel. And um, really, you really don't hear the, if I could, uh, I don't know, let me grab the, you're going to lose the focus here. It's just, I want you to listen to the buzz. And now what I'm going to do is get you to listen to the buzz of the actual speaker. And it's actually quite quiet. And now that you're there, I'm going to crank the stereo right up. So do you hear the buzz now? A little static there. It's because I'm uh, not giving it a, a signal. So we're back to about... Uh, I started off... Uh, here, here you go with the camera. Uh, I started off uh, at about the zero mark and that's quite loud. Uh, a lot of people uh, would tell me to turn it down at uh, when it's at zero. And it goes as high as um, plus 15. Um, so now uh, I'll get my cameraman to cut. I'm going to set the stereo up with, uh, you know, I'm going to play a tune through it. And, um, and then you'll notice the distortion when I plug the, my laptop in and what the difference is. Okay, uh, now I want to show you, um, you know, amplified buzz. Just a bad signal again. It's uh, due to the inverter. It's the inverter that's causing this. Right now, I have the volume turned right off on my uh, amplifier, and what I have is like an open signal. I have the patch cords that I'm calling for that uh, goes to my laptop. So, uh, if I can get the cameraman now to go against my speaker, again, I'm just going to bring it to zero, and uh, you'll, uh, you'll definitely hear the buzz. So, there we are. Uh, everything's got a really good buzz, and it's uh, partial because I'm, I'm not sending a signal to it. Now if I can get you to uh, zip real close. Um, so here on my laptop, and uh, here's the power supply. Here's the power supply to my laptop, and uh, I'm now going to unplug it. So did you hear how clean that is again? If I can get you to go over to the speaker again. And so now the signal that's getting to the stereo is the laptop only, the battery on the laptop only. Now I'm going to plug it in. Do you hear the buzz? It's pretty definite. I'm just hoping that the uh, camera is picking all that up. So what happens is, is here I'm just going to... Uh, just trying to show you that in fact uh, it is music that was ready to go so here again uh, as soon as I hit pause the buzz is unbelievable in this room right now and that's due to the inverter you would get that uh, from the generator um, so now what I would like to do is uh, try and kill all this it's not really it's 
not really off until you turn the power bar off. Anything with a remote control, um, you know, it's waiting to be turned on. So it's a little bit crazier than just a ghost load. It's a ghost load plus anything with a remote control that's waiting for a signal. Um, so here I have another appliance, oh, a cat, and uh, this is just a multi-tool, and it seems to have a mind of its own uh, on uh, these modified sine waves. If I can get to look at look at how it, it's acting up, and uh, now I got it to max, and then I got there. You know what I mean? It's just a really got a mind on its own. And uh, when I first uh, when I first bought my first multi tool, I thought it was a defect in the tool. I brought it back, got the other brand new one, and uh, no, it's just um, some appliances just do not like uh, modified sine wave um, inverters. Uh, and when it comes to ghost loads, again, I never mentioned that in my previous videos. But um, those GFIs, ground fault interrupt, uh, that you use for you know shock hazard uh, reasons. That's why we have these type of plugins. Uh, ground faults, uh, they draw crazy amounts of power. Like you'd be surprised. It's it's like close to uh, 25 watts, just to have that type of plugin. So that too, if you've got a bunch of these in your house, you might want to consider uh, just going back to a normal uh, plugin. Another crazy ghost load that I should mention, I know this is off topic again, but uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, older um, lights that um, if you're infrared you break the beam and the light turns on and uh, some people try to use that for the security lights or, uh, or it just turns on for your convenience. Those the old type, in particular when you, uh, the type where you would turn it on for a second or two, turn it off, then turn it back on and it would stay on. Uh, they were fairly popular in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and that too, I bet you that draws close to uh, 28 watts, just to give you that type of light. Now off is off. If it's off, it's not drawing any power. But as soon as you turn it on, or you get it rigged, so that when you break the beam it turns on. That's you know, You're better off just having a 13 watt uh, compact fluorescent wired in with no switch and just leave it on. It would be a lot cheaper than watts. But here in particular, uh, in this episode here, because I'm talking about inverters, um, some appliances, I don't know why, it's just either uh, cheaply built or uh, they didn't add the extra to it. Um, I had um, uh, electronic timers that you plug into the wall and then you plug an appliance into it and out of four, all four wanted to go into meltdown and they got unbelievably hot within seconds. You could cook an egg off it uh, after about 20 to 30 seconds so it, like it would have gone into full meltdown if I wouldn't have unplugged them and that's part of the reason why I'm trying to get an answer on these um, dishwashers and um, uh, automatic clothes washers with the electronic timer are they modified sine wave inverter friendly it just seems that no one no one wants to answer on that one or no one in the on the planet has ever tried to run that type of apply I can't believe that but you just haven't seen my videos yet, I guess, and haven't answered. But uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, you know, they'll run, uh, you know, 99% of the things. Some stereos, even. I had a uh, Kenwood, and it was a really nice amplifier. It was the old type with the wooden, wooden, uh, you know, panel all the way around, and um, it uh, had the uh, guitar. You could plug two guitars into it and two microphones on the one half of the amplifier and on the other half, half of the amp it was just a music amplifier really really nice amplifier but uh, it was not inverter friendly at all the buzz off of that was uh, was terrible I also owned a Philips um, power amplifier and that was uh, 150 watts a side and that too it buzzed like Christmas uh, so when you're purchasing stereo equipment um, 
try to either you could bring a little inverter box with you and in, right into the stereo shop and that'll be the proof right there if the if it buzzes it'll even buzz on the small ones um, and if not then you gotta ask them can I bring this amp home try it out and see if it'll run uh, fine on my power most uh, salesmen will understand and they'll say sure and some of them know once you're out the door you're out the door so if that's the case now um, then what I would recommend is um, and I'm sure that you could find uh, people that have it. it this is just a little uh, inverter box it's got uh, the inverter built right on just show up to your stereo shop with one of these plug it in if it buzzes you'll know right off the bat this will do exactly the same as this and this and this and even the small one they're all the same modified sine wave when it comes to um, distortion now what I was telling you earlier that uh, the bigger inverters you should really double up the, the cables on uh, these two here I have a little um, 110 buzz box a little uh, arc welder small little AC arc welder and um, it doesn't matter which one they all seem to perform exactly the same I thought that the uh, welder would perform better with the bigger inverter and no uh, the my end results were they welded just as good I've never tried to weld on the smaller ones but I have done an awful lot of welding on the 3000 well I don't even buy I didn't even bother switching over anymore I just stay on the 3000 and just so uh, the way that I'm rigged I've got my uh, generator it's up and running right now and it's plugged in and everything outside in my shed so here comes the power and right away it goes to a set of plugins so it goes to a set of plugins first the hot carries through just an ordinary light switch and then off to my transfer switch and the common just goes straight to the, the transfer switch so I could even just draw it on here on my uh, transfer switch and that's just the common just just continues through and uh, the reason why I wanted a switch up here is because I get to control do I want the house to run on the inverter or do I want the house to run on the generator and there's uh, large advantages to being able to do that if you have a large enough inverter really you can have a very very small generator and still run a little laundry and the reason for it is, is this set of plugins. I have these great big fleet chargers. These are uh, manual battery chargers, and uh, they're fleet chargers. And uh, here, it, if I turn it uh, counterclockwise, it's on hold. If I go this way, it's got the timer. And then I get to choose 2 amp, 10 amp, 40 amp, or 200 amp boost. Right now it's on uh, 200 amp boost. I'm just trying to slam it right now. It's I've got terrible weather. It's uh, raining outside actually, so it doesn't hurt. The reason why I went manual is so that I would get more bang for my buck uh, when it came to burning the gasoline. If you have an automatic charger, what happens is the closer and closer it gets to full charge, the more and more they taper. So the voltage tapers and tapers and tapers. So you might have a uh, you know a 50 amp battery charger but it's only giving you 2 amp that's because you're closer and closer to full charge so I didn't want that I want wide open and let me decide and uh, often just by the amount of gasoline that I'll put in the generator I know that it's going to die at a you know certain time uh, at night and uh, I don't have to worry about overcharging so there's a, a large advantage being able to do I want the house on the inverter or do I want the house on the um, generator so right now the house is on the generator so if I can get my cameraman to stand, just stand right here and zoom in to my plug-in so really the power from the generator that's outside right now it's in running in my shed the power goes to the plug-ins first then the power continues on and I get to decide whether I want the transfer switch to be on the generator or just on the inverter so here's my switch so you see this this center thing right here where, where I'm touching 
uh, that's what pulls in and it's the power of the generator that causes to causes it to throw onto itself this transfer switch is an automatic double pull double throw transfer switch and you must disconnect both you can't just play with the hot both must be disconnected so I'll turn it off and you'll see this stick up it'll pop out so now the house is on the inverter and my battery chargers are still running wide open and it's kind of nice I could be outside uh, start the generator plug it in I don't even need to worry about this switch I know no matter what my, my battery chargers are going and um, if it can happen it will it's only a matter of time and um, if you didn't have a transfer switch there's a chance where somebody could accidentally plug the generator in while the inverter is running and uh, you would end up you know one is going to win and uh, the odds are you could pop your inverter uh, and do damage so that's why you have to have a, a, a transfer switch you can get totally manual where it doesn't happen electrically and actually some inverters you buy them with the transfer switch built right in so uh, there's a few of them the Outback uh, Trace they also uh, sell really nice fancy dancy inverters I mean if you 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 want to pay the money all the stuff is out there but I mean this this inverter here I I got it for like 200 bucks so again you'll you'll see it pull in I could even do it manually and just push it like that but uh, the power is not going through the switch you see now I'll flip the switch and it's the power of the generator that causes the that continues through the switch and that causes the um, transfer switch to throw on there so if you're ever buying battery chargers make sure that they're the manual ones and um, um, this, these ones here I really like them they're a little bit loud but they're fan cooled and that's kind of nice you know like right now I've got this thing on boost and I'll leave it on there all night no problem no problem I've done it uh, several times I could actually trip the generator if I had both of them on uh, wide open so I'll run one on 40 amp and the other one on 200 there now now they're both on 40 amp and they give you a nice uh, amp gauge here and you can kind of see uh, you know what it's giving you and uh, that's kind of nice so in a nutshell, here is your here is the circuit. The power goes to your plug-ins first. So no matter what, your battery chargers go. Then you get to decide: Do I want the house on the inverter, or do I want the house on the um, on the uh, generator? And then off to the transfer switch it goes, and it all happens automatically. It's nice when you're outside. You plug it in. There can be no chance of a mistake. And uh, like I said, if it can happen, it will. It's just a matter of time. If you don't have this type of setup, the odds of you losing an inverter because you plugged one into the other, um, the odds are very, very good. I mean, they, if they don't sync together right on the money, one is going to win and the other is going to lose, and the odds are you can burn out an inverter. So there we are with that. So here I've got... Uh, quick connect disconnects and you see them on uh, forklifts electric forklifts uh, or you see them on golf carts electric golf carts where larger amps are applied um, and the nice thing is is uh, if a lightning storm was ever to uh, you know fly through the area it takes me no time boom you're disconnected and I'm on to the other inverter or if you were to have one that went into meltdown I'm back online in, in seconds, literally seconds. Uh, that small little 1500-watt uh, inverter uh, that I showed you in there, I just have uh, clips where I would clip it on to a uh, battery, and, um, you know, if the lightning ever uh, hit, I'd be blowing it up <laughs> instead of the uh, little bit more expensive um, inverters. I used to have a little 400-watt that I would actually... Uh, uh, run during uh, lightning storms and um, you know I didn't care whether it got hit uh, I got these small inverters for like thirty dollars so you could blow quite a few of those up before you shed a tear um, but when you start uh, paying you know several hundred dollars or 
this one here, this one, uh, again, it was made by uh, PowerJaw. They claim it's a um, true sine wave, which I'm very, very disappointed in it. And now I need somebody else to show me, look how much better my pure sine wave is, uh, pure sine wave inverter is. And now if they could show me and they can prove to me that, look, the buzz, you got rid of the buzz on the laptop, which it didn't do. Or it, uh, the only one thing that I could say that it did do is when I checked the line power with, uh, with the multi-tester, uh, it did show me uh, 117 volts. Whereas I've seen as low as 85 volts on the modified sine wave, but you need a, a fluke to measure um, the proper voltage on a modified sine wave inverter. And uh, it has to do with being able to read the uh, EMS, I think you call that, or uh, RMS. The true RMS, and that's in your waveform, 60 hertz per second. So you're getting this 60 times in one second. That's what they mean by hertz, 60 hertz per second. Uh, and it's a nice, nice smooth wave when you're on a generator, or they claim, you know, so they claim on a pure sine wave inverter. But on a modified sine wave inverter, if you were to look at the wave, it actually looks like um, steps. Like you're going up a staircase and then down a staircase, you know, through your, through your full wave. And uh, that's what the wave looks like if you were to scope that on a, on a modified sine wave inverter. There's your difference there. Uh, back in the old, old days, the way that they used to invert, believe it or not, was uh, a 12 volt motor that was lo Lovejoy coupled to a generator. And that was your, to change 12 volts DC to uh, household current. And uh, the power that came off that was unbelievably clean. Cleaner than any uh, pure sine wave inverter. But unbelievably inefficient. Uh, in particular, if the inverter was just on idle, waiting for you to plug something in, and it was supposedly like uh, you lost like 40% right off the top from having no load, which was terrible, to loaded right up, uh, there was a 40% loss, unbelievably clean, but 40% uh, loss. Then, um, in the 70s, you were able to get a square wave inverter and uh, it was okay if you're gonna run a crock pot or you were gonna run things like a variable speed drill you lost your variable speed the drill would work but you got no variable speed and there was a lot of things forget about electronics forget about TV sets stereos it would just destroy them you blow them up if you plug it into a uh, a square wave inverter and uh, for a 400 watt inverter that thing there uh, it weighed like 10 pounds like it had this great big coil in there and uh, it was uh, quite heavy just to give you 400 watt now you hold you know those 400 watt inverters you just hold that with two fingers there's really nothing to them so uh, I'm really glad that I put these uh, quick connect disconnects in this one here, I've only got the one uh, running the inverter. This one here, I doubled it up. And um, it would run my wood splitter, but the uh, RF that was coming off of it was just terrible. You heard it right through the electric motor. If you had a drink of water and you sat it on my splitter and I'm running it on the generator, and now all of a sudden I would switch over to the inverter you'd see that it would just go into this crazy ride where the, there'd be a ripple on, on your drink, on the water in your glass. It just, the, the, the RF just carried itself right through uh, to the wood splitter. It was just terrible. You know, uh, to me, it was just a big waste of money. I paid about 550 bucks for this. Uh, and it's a, a 5,000 watt, or again, so they claim, 5,000 watt. And it's too bad out of all of my inverters. I hate this one the most. Um, so now I need somebody to coax me, you know. I can do the test for you, 
But now you do the test and you show me how much better your pure sine wave is. Because uh, hard to coax me now, you know, now that I've I've proven it with this thing. But then again, there could be a fraud. There's um, like uh, I've had one where uh, they were saying, well, your, your charge controller, it, it's a fraud. And I never even went through, I never ever once said that this was a MPPT. That's the claim on this charge controller. And yet there are YouTubes that disprove it. And after they disproved it, finally the price came down. Now I can get them for under 100 bucks. But when they first came out, they were almost $300. So, you know, there's a fraud there. And I'm sure, you know, there's another fraud there. And uh, I could probably just make a segment on fraud um, electronics. That um, You know, I bet you there's another segment there that I could... Over the years, you, it seems, uh, you know, if you're to get burnt, you play with it enough, and you're the first one to do it, uh, it seems that uh, it's not hard to run into all these frauds. But um, that's pretty much it uh, to wrap things up. Uh, you'll hear me touch on inverters again lightly in uh, some of the rest of my um, YouTube videos, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. There's my segment on um, inverters. Thanks. In her eye and shot good at daddy's side She took me down to the altar Told me I wouldn't